tell me about yourself. Well, <laughs> um, my name is Ashanti. Um, I'm not gonna call myself a fitness, fitness influencer because I feel like I work like an athlete, so I like to refer to myself as an athlete and an entrepreneur, a student, and a mom. Right, so you're a mom? Yes. Um, how old are you? I'm 26. How old is your son? Five. Right, so he just turned five. Just turned five? Yes. Tell me about how you got started in fitness. Um, my fitness journey started in 2014. Um, after I had my son, I was 250 after I gave birth to my son. Um, I have put on a lot of weight and I just wasn't liking the space that I was in at that moment, like mind wise, like mental wise and physical wise, like I was in a bad space. So I decided to change my eating habits and started working out to, you know, just like a feel better about myself. And then it, you know, it did more for me mentally as well. So I just kept going with it. How much weight did you lose? I was 250. And then I dropped weight all the way down to 130. And then once I hit 130, that's when I started working on building muscle. So you lost in total 120 pounds? Yes. All right. Like a whole person. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people, right, they, um, did you have an issue with loose skin? Um, not really. Um, the thing is, everybody has, I get this question a lot. A lot of people, they have different skin types. Like, when you put on a certain amount of weight, it's either you could be, you could, you could be overweight and still have tight skin, or you could have really excessive loose skin. Luckily, my skin wasn't ex excessively loose, so I was able to, shrink my stomach down without having to take sur like surgery <laughs> surgery is an option because a lot of people do that like when they have excess skin they go get a tummy tuck or something like that but what i did was i would saran wrap my stomach and i would work out in the sauna because i heard that the sauna really helps as far as tightening your skin so i would do 30 minute workouts in the sauna to help minimize that issue was there ever a time when your skin did look a little loose and that's what made you start saran wrapping um yes as i started losing weight i had a, a little bit of excess skin but nothing that was like too too dramatic i actually posted up a video on my um on my youtube page discussing that topic because if you have loose loose skin to the point that it's it hangs over really heavy then you might have to take, you have, might have to get a tummy tuck because it's it's no possible way of shrinking your skin down once it stretches out to a, to a certain point. Okay. So one of the questions that I did get on Instagram was, did you ever get liposuction or any other surgery? No, I had. <laughs> people ask me that a lot as well. Um, I've never had lipo. I had a breast reduction which is the only procedure that I've ever done. And that's because when I lost so much weight, I was an F cup and I breastfed my son as well. So my boobs were really saggy after I lost weight and finished breastfeeding and everything like that. And it was so painful that I couldn't even do cardio. Like I couldn't run, I couldn't like work out how I wanted to. So I decided to get a breast reduction and a lift. So that way, I went from I went from being a F cup to a to a D, and it's way more comfortable for me. So, what are your thoughts on surgeries and like body image? I feel like I don't I don't I really I don't knock people who, who do get surgery because people do it for different reasons, you know. But um, it also depends on what the procedure is. And I have I know a couple of friends who who've had surgery, so I don't have nothing in against it. Everybody has what they would like to do. I just say that I try to push people to just work out instead, like a, instead of getting things like lipo and stuff like that. Like if you have to get a tummy tuck because of the fact that your skin is excessive, then fine. Like if it's things that you can't control with your body, then you could you could take the measures to you know fix them. 
but if you're just doing it just because you want to get abs or something work out because if you get the surgery and you start eating bad how you was eating before you had it done and you start drinking and doing all this crap you're gonna end up getting gaining the weight right back so what are you gonna do keep spending money on surgery every year that's a waste of money save your money learn how to eat healthy it's a habit you know make it a habit so that way you don't have to sit there and spend five thousand ten thousand dollars on on liposuction every year just to maintain right what about like young girls that are you know pretty young girls that probably look up to like let's say kylie jenner and they're getting surgery done just to like increase or enhance their appearance um that's a touchy situation um you have to learn to love yourself you know like you can apply makeup and things like that i don't i'm not against it i wear makeup but like as far as doing things like to your face i'm not i don't know i just learn to love yourself so since all right this is a really good topic do you know the last time we did an interview at the end yes. there's a lady that approached us and she had a very good point she said People that are fat, you know, they mentally, they take on that persona. So how did you find confidence or like, do did anything change mentally when you went from being 250 down to 130 and then transforming into the social media influencer that you are? Um, social media really didn't affect my confidence level. Um, I've always been a confident person, you know, kind of sort of. Um, but losing weight kind of, it, it, it did build my confidence level a little bit more. Um, not only, it wasn't just about looks, it was just, it built my confidence as knowing what I was capable of. Like, my confidence inside. Like, I know that I can do certain things now because of the things I was able to do, you know, like as far as losing all that weight, as far as I was in school and it, being able to graduate and just had a baby and it was, it was like a lot of achievements that I was able to <laughs> accomplish at one point. So that really made me feel like untouchable, like I can do anything that I put my mind to. It's not about the outside because you could get hurt or like lose a leg or you know it has to be here yeah. all right so what about like atten attention from guys did that play a role uh, Not play i a really role don't i really don't like <laughs> i really don't like attention from um from from guys like that i just that that's not like a i i know that a, a lot of the time it's not for the right reasons so i just don't that doesn't really boost my confidence level like that like i could care less <laughs> okay so let's talk about relationships okay are you in a relationship now no no i don't i don't date anymore <laughs> i'm on and off with it so so to speak and with your last serious relationship um my son's father was my last serious relationship i mean after after that i kind of took a year and a half like to myself before i started you know dating again and i mean um i try you know but i just didn't see like i don't know me and this generation of people <laughs> that that are out here nowadays it just doesn't work out and i just started just working on myself and just became more focused on making myself a better person and focus on school and my business and my son and I just that's that's the things that I concentrate on I don't really concentrate on dating and stuff like that anymore eventually maybe later on but not right now so do you do like go on dates and not like that you know I just I mean I used to but just I don't I don't have the time for it like my schedule is really crazy and it's hard to find somebody who could kind of understand like all the things that I have to juggle. Like when you take on the role of trying to date somebody, you have, you have to be able to make time for them. And you know, their 
a lot of times people like people's lifestyles don't match up with my lifestyle so it just doesn't work out if you're gonna if if i was to date it would have to like you know yeah i mean i don't want to get in trouble me. so I don't, I don't really want to keep pushing no. but like, <laughs> like do you talk to anybody or do you like or you just kind of just like you know work i mean i talk it? to people but it i i, I talk <laughs> to people but it's nothing that's super serious i'm not really looking for that like right now like I might go out for drinks or whatever, like socially, every once in a while with people, but it's not nothing that's like, we're gonna be my boyfriend and just not right now. If it happens, it happens, but I'm just, I'm not looking for it. Do you think that the fact that like you have a kid and are you still in contact with your baby father? Yeah, we're, we're, we're cordial, so. Does that like any way affect? My day life? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say in a way, not that people are against the fact that I have a son. I'm just gonna say that I'm pretty, I'm really like so focused on my son. I, I mean, I love, I love my son, my son so much that I don't know. I just I like spending time with him. I feel like me spending time with him is more valuable to me than a, than going out with guys or you know, like a lot of people nowadays like they date people, but they're they don't really try to build anything with people. They just want to have fun and, you know, and have a fling. And I'm not really like looking for that. Like if I want to date somebody or be serious with somebody, like they are going to be involved in my son's life. And, you know, like, so when I get to that point, then fine. But right now I'm just like, I'm just focused on him. And I don't, you know, they, they don't care about that. It's just, it's me. <laughs> it's me who push people away. <laughs> what are you trying to build if, in terms of like relationship wise? Um, when I mean build, I mean not, it's, it has to be somebody who could be my, like a partner, like with me. Like, cause the things that I'm trying to accomplish <laughs> in my life, like they have to be able to kind of help out a little bit like I don't I can't be involved with with someone who just sits there and watch watches me like bust my ass. <laughs> I mean or, I mean work work hard you know um, and not assist me somehow so I'm 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 trying to like do big things so they have to be able to you know help me do that make my life easier so right, to speak so as in as a ambitious woman what are some characteristics that you look for in a future husband i like people who are motivated like i hate lazy <laughs> lazy people who are just like they settle for mediocre stuff with life like I, I like a person who has some type of ambition and wants to do something like I, I like you could not be rich or whatever but if you're motivated to like work and try to change your life around to you know and we have like a similar vision then that would be awesome right. um, so what advice do you have for guys out there that are dating ambitious women to be more supportive of their business endeavors help her out you know like if she whatever she's trying to get involved in like if it's designing clothes or being a if being a fitness model like <laughs> seriously <laughs> no seriously you know why because i see there there is like there are girls i know who are who are on instagram who are fitness models and a lot of them a lot of people don't realize that they're the people that they're in a relationship with are the people who are helping them like if you could find somebody who's like that who could help you like as far as building your brand and building what you're trying to do then that's awesome like they're be the, they're, they're like the, the the man behind the, the man like you know in the background like if you could play background and <laughs> you know take the pictures and the videos and the help with the content and all that and work on the site and you know like things that i can't handle that's, you know, that's awesome. I see a lot of girls who have that, like have that in their life and they're able to 
Yeah. You know, you need people like that. Right. Now it's funny, like because I'm actually this is very much related to like my situation. I don't know if that's going <laughs> back. No, no, no. But it's yeah. it's it, it, it's a serious it's a serious thing. Like build your woman up. Like don't break her down. Build help build her up. All right. So I guess my next question would be. Um, How could guys better cope with, you know, their girl being in, like, the spotlight? As far as social media-wise? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people can't handle that. Only because of the fact that we live in a world where, you know, sex kind of sells a little bit. Talk about it. <laughs> about it it kind of sells a little bit. So, I mean... I'm sorry, what's that mean? <laughs> um, Des, you want to join this now? Conversation? <laughs> please <laughs> come on come on come join this conversation come on baby please <laughs> all right so keep going so sex kind of sells a little bit and as a fitness person you kind of have to like watch what you do a little bit like you 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 have to balance it out like you could be sexy and and show off your you, you show off your physique because you work so hard on it <laughs> like you want to be able to show off your show off your your body to the world, but still like maintain some type of dignity and you know it's it's difficult. A lot of guys can't handle that when you have to post up like a bikini pic, like and it's getting like a whole bunch of creeps under the comments. Some guys can't understand that, but they have to understand like you're not like what's your motive your motive behind what you're doing. Like if you're doing it because you want attention, just to get attention, then that's a little bit different. But if you're doing it because you're trying to show like moms who who are like, don't like their body right now and they want to start working out and you could show them that, hey, you could look like, you could have a body like this too. If you work out how I work out. If you're doing it for motivation purposes, if they could understand that, then that would be awesome. But if they can't, then, you know, a lot of guys are insecure. They, they're scared to lose their women or to have people comment on, you know, their, their girl's body. But you just have to, if she's not like a, a bad girl and you know what her purpose is for doing that, then yeah. leave her alone. No, no, that's definitely something that's, <laughs> um, that's a little challenging. That's, the main thing is like getting other guys like commenting under it because sometimes the way I look at it, and this is something that, you know, I've had to work on, I've got better at it, is like when I see you write, you know, draw, like put heart eyes or like hearts or like something crazy underneath my girl's picture, mm -hmm. like I'm taking that as like you disrespecting me the same way if we in the gym, it's like, because I know how like guys kind of interact with one another. If I see yes. you with your girl, if I come up to her and like, you know, dang, you got the cake, that's disrespectful to you. Like that's just yes. the way guys think. So if a guy does that, it's hard to not like really internalize that but i know it is you know like social media but i kind of think just primitively in our brain it's kind of just like you just automatically take offense to it i know you're you're gonna be protective because it's you're female but i mean men are gonna be men like you can't you could walk down the street with her and i mean if she has a banging body <laughs> like I, people are gonna look at it you just have to be confident within yourself and know that you secure feel secure in your relationship like my my dad will be like don't wear this and i'm like because your butt is big and i'm like man listen i could wear a a, <laughs> a wrap and they're still gonna see my curves like <laughs> it doesn't make a difference you just have to be secure with your women like she's not if you love her and you know that she's not gonna do something reckless then it's, like it's, it. it's not like she's DMing people like it's do you know then it's different like when it becomes like serious like that then okay but comments it's just a comment it's social media it's not yeah and it's just crazy like because like I have friends who you know um like they'll see a girl with a boyfriend and like, the stuff that they'll say to me like hey, yo, yo, they like, don't care it's not, like, <laughs> they'll be telling me like yo like I could take his girl. I could like. I'm like, yo, relax. Like, <laughs> it, yo, and this is how conversations have gone. Me and my friends. Trust the time me, I know. I, I was 11, to the, now I'm 25, and it's, I'm like, yo, are you? It's crazy. Grown men be 40 years old is having the same childish 13 year old conversation. Like, yo, she bad. Like, 
dang son, but she with this guy. I'm still gonna shoot my shot. I'm like, you a grown man, bro. Like, what are you? <laughs> so it's just what? like knowing that, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Trust and then me. to be honest, I'm a I'm a very proud person. I don't really like to like I'm a proud person, so when I I don't like disrespect in any regard like that. So it's a it's a tough pill to swallow. Internally, like, yeah, like <laughs> yo, I know that, yo, did he really just look in my butt like that? Like, well, you know what? Uh, it's just like But you should be happy because you know she looks good. Like it's, it's you know no, you wouldn't you know on, on on my good days I'm like you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Some that's days, how you gotta think about it. Like, yeah, that's mine. That's me. Like, you yeah. know, not like, yo, why is he looking at my girl? You gotta be like, all right, like I know my girl is bad. Like, show her off. Like, she's your girl. She's beautiful. You should want the world to see her. They can't have her. <laughs> they can look at her. You can look, but you can't touch. It's cool. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just take it as that. Like, you should be happy that you have something that people what they want or they look at but they can't they can't have it it's you be it's all a security thing you have to be secure and confident like yeah she's beautiful that's my girl though all right <laughs> so how do like how does somebody develop confidence i think it's taught like from your parents you know like telling your kids that you love them and that they're beautiful and you know like it's it's f from home like what your parents tell you and how they how they raise you yeah but i mean some people don't some people they don't they don't have that they don't have people um who tell them that they love them or that they're beautiful internally or you know externally they don't have that so if you have to like build yourself up and you know just look in the mirror and Talk to yourself. Yeah. You know. I just want to think like, about the good. Focus on the good things about yourself. What are your thoughts on like the company you keep? That's a big thing. You know, like I go through that all the time. I, I my cousin laughs because he says I changed my number more than a drug dealer because I change my number like every year. But my thing is that to me is I just feel like clen I cleanse myself of people. That's how I see it. Like, if you don't bring any type of value, not just, like, money-wise, like, to my life, like, positivity, like, just anything, then I just, I, I, I can't be around it. I can't be around it. I like people in my, or who are in my life for a reason. Like, you have to have a purpose to be here. And it is true, the, the company you keep, because if you keep negative people around you, you're going to turn into a negative person. If you are around people who are positive, and you're going to be a positive person. If you're around people who are wealthy, they're going to teach you about how to be wealthy. Eventually, you're turn into a wealthy person. If you have to, what do you, whatever you choose to aspire to be, those are the com that's the company that you need to keep around you. Because you'll pick up things from them. It'll become, a, it'll become a habit. Like, you, you guys are bounce off of each other. The energy, everything. So it's important to watch the company that you keep. If you feel like you're in a bad space, you should look around, you should, you should look at who's around you, who's causing that. You might not recognize it. It might be somebody who you might think is a friend or you, know, or you view as a friend and they might be a really negative impact on you. And sometimes you gotta let them go make space for growth so you could be a better person all right um so what about like mentorship do you have mentors not really i have people that i look up to you know people who motivate me sometimes when i'm not motivated like who like the rock i love him um kevin hart gary v um Damon from off our Shark Tank, I love him. Um, a few people like that that I look, that I look up to. So. Right. What do you think of my action next? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so you met Gary V? Yes. Okay. What was that like? Um, it was awesome. They actually um, reached out to me via email. Um, 
and told me that they wanted to bring me on as uh, one of their brand ambassadors because Gary's like involved in like a, a whole bunch of like things. He works with sneakers, he works with beauty, he works with sports, clothing, like a lot of stuff. So um, they had me come up to the office and just, you know, showed me around and had me basically take, I called it the Fit Freak Takeover <laughs> of their office and, you know, just discuss with me as far as like my content that I'm building as far as what I want to do later on in life as far as with my business, as far as my fitness and everything. So it was awesome. You know, me and him, they, we, um, we still work together. He actually, he actually... I actually did a shoot for K Swiss for the company that I'm um, for the secrets that he just um, dropped with them. So it's awesome. Right. What um give me the most valuable piece of advice that he gave you during you guys' meeting. Um just to be myself and just to just keep posting content. Like don't don't filter myself. You know, just be raw and be real. You know, and just keep creating. And don't be scared of fear and judgment of what people have to say about me. So, it was awesome. It was, it's cool to sit down with somebody that you look up to and really have them give you tools on how to build your brand and, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, like, what are your goals? Business-wise, um, business I would like to build my fitness brand, you know, like big, like Nike. <laughs> That's my, my main goal. Is to, about your apparel line? Yes, or? my apparel line. I actually, I have a, a my activewear line. It's called Fit Freak Activewear. So I just want to, you know, focus on that and just get it as big as possible. So, when you first started your active wear line, how long did it take for you to actually get it up and running? From the time that you first came up with the thought concept? of the idea, the concept, um, it took a it took a, a while because you had to take in uh, I had to take in a concept of a lot of things. I had to learn about how to run a business. I had to learn about inventory and shipping and things like that. I had to, and because the fact that I'm making clothes, I had to, I mean, I already knew about clothes because I went to high school to, to, for, um, for fashion. So I already knew certain things about materials and stuff like that, but I had to make sure that the stuff that I was looking for, as far as my manufacturers and things like that was good quality stuff. Cause I'm very picky about that so that that's what took the longest is flying overseas to go look at materials and look at companies and make sure that they had what I wanted and they understood like because I do everything I do my sketches I pick out my fabrics I everything my marketing everything. <laughs> my website <laughs> so it took a while I'm gonna say it took six months for me to kind of learn the basics of stuff before I actually started even creating designs. And then once I started creating and sketching and picking up materials, it took four months for me to actually produce my goods. So. So you came up with the business model of how it was gonna run, yep. and then you came up with the designs, and then you actually launched it. it. Okay. Yes. All so. Right. so, in terms of like branding, like what's your game plan with how you want to build your brand? Um, I just want to be different from everybody else. You know, I feel like I have a a story to tell. You know, like I've been through a lot of stuff. So I just, I wanna just tell people my story. That is my brand, my, me, you know, like what I've gone through and what I've accomplished with as far as fitness wise, as far as goals wise, like 
where I'm at right now, I didn't, I would never, from how, how things used to be for me, I wouldn't expect me to be in the position that I'm in right now. So, so how are you getting your um, more exposure for your products? Um, social media, you know, like Gary says, Instagram is everything. Your phone is everything. <laughs> is everything. So I I use my um my social media platform. You know, um, I it started off with just telling my story and stuff like that, and then I kind of learned how to use it in order to for my business as well. So I, I use that platform to promote my business and promote me because I'm a brand and my active wear is a brand. So. I have to monitor both things at the same time. Right. I see that you work with a lot of other influencers. You know, so like, how does that work? Do they just get your product, or do you send it to them and tell them to post with it? Um, basically, you know, a lot of a lot of influencers, they're like, if I send them product, like they'll do it off of GP. Like, you know, it's it's a, the the black fitness community is pretty small. It's not like a lot of, you know, girls who are out here who do work out who are ethnic. So we basically know who each who we are, like who each other is. So if I send them product, they'll do. I'll do the same thing in return for them. You know. Okay. When you say GP, what does that mean? He's <laughs> a GP. Like they'll do it just because. You know, like. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so just so that I can get like a proper like visualization of your business, mm -hmm. do you make more than a thousand a week off of it? Um, I'm not really going to discuss that, but I make a good, a good amount of money a week off my business, so it's good. Alright. Do you have another job? Uh, yes, I do. I do have another job. I bartend like at night as well. So, okay. I mean, but that's like a, a part-time thing. You know, like I just started my business like a year. It's, it's been a year now. Congratulations. It's been a year. So, um, it's just getting to the point, it's, get, it's getting to the point where, you know, I could, Stop, I have so much things that I have to take care of. You know, like the business takes care, of this, takes care of itself. So I work just to basically, you know, take care of my bills and things like that. I juggle a lot of stuff. But. Okay. All right, so what point financially do you think a business needs to get to before the founder or CEO should quit their other job? <sighs> I mean, your profit margin has to be like, exquisite <laughs> like I wouldn't I, don't, I wouldn't quit working probably until like I have like a million dollars <laughs> at least I'm just, I don't you know I just I don't know like to to focus primarily on your business is it sometimes it's a it's it's a talented thing because some people you could start a business and it could go belly up it could be good and then it could be bad so like when you feel like you're secure enough to with your business and it's not fluctuating or whatever then you can quit and just you know okay. all right so how do you deal with when you do like lose customers or when it's a slow season um promotion you know, you try, you try not to lose customers. Like, as long as you have good customer service and you contact your customers if something's going on, going like if if a product is sold out, you know, like it's never with with my business is never a, a a quality issue. It's like if something is sold out, then I have to email them when it's back in stock. Like I never lose a customer. I might lose a sale because of the fact that it's, because of the fact that something's not in stock or sold out at the moment. But other than that, I retain my customers. I communicate with them as much as possible about any issue that's going on. So, right. so you have a hundred percent, right? 
What percentage do you give to customer service and what percentage do you give to getting new customers? It's, it has to be 50-50. You know, it's like you, I don't have a phone a phone line, so I basically handle everything like through via email, you know? And I handle my promotion through social media. Everything is online. So you have to find a balance between those two things, between promotion, creating, and customer service. Because customer service is key. You know, the customer's always right. You can't have bad service, that's how you lose your customers. So, it's, I get customers off, off of word of mouth, off of because of what I do, like as far as looking out for them and, and if I have an issue with a product. Like for instance, even in um, a, this, this customer, she bought a waist trimmer online and she loved it so much that she referred it to everybody in her job and bought all of them waist trimmers and then they started ordering for like their cousins and their aunts it was crazy like it was that's when i had just first heard, first started out and off of your product being good and word of mouth like you could get sales off of that so quality is very important okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to instagram and get some of these questions <laughs> if anything is like excessively vulgar i'm not even going to i doubt it though all right might be one or two like guys that ask a question about my dating life or something like that maybe so right, you ready yes this first one is crazy <laughs> from underscore underscore english and i'm, I'm shouting y'all out too i'm putting on blast <laughs> they had the audacity to ask can i get a dollar <laughs> <laughs> i actually know that person though i i, I know that person i know that all right, so he's an old friend. He was trying to be funny. All right, so it's cool. It's cool. I've got, got no money for you, Malcolm. None. <laughs> the next question by King Styles Thirty One is: Do you eat hollow top ice cream? No, I don't. Why not? Oh my God! That's a, he said that that face. Um, I'm sorry. I have like a weakness for Ben and Cherries, even though hollow is way healthier. But I like if I do have a cheat snack which is like every once in a while and it, it has to be Ben and Jerry's chocolate ice cream like the fudge ice cream I'm sorry that's like it's like my met like my 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 <laughs> when I'm going through my menstrual cycle it's calling for Ben and Jerry's for that chocolate I'm not sure how hollow tastes is I'm but I need Ben and Jerry's is more I'm, like unhealthy tastes better sweeter so. yes I know it's bad but but, I don't even know I'm saying it tastes good yes it's a oh, I, I need the fudge <laughs> Uh, since, we, since you said menstrual, Miley Hart asks, how do you deal with bloating? What do you do to reduce bloating? That is a big problem for me. Like, I could literally have abs one day and the next day, if like my period is coming, like my period hits me like a week before it actually comes. Like with the, <laughs> with the water, cause I like, I hold a lot of water. In my body period so what i do to um basically shed the water i work out in the sauna i take dandelion root which basically dries out your body and it's also good for your blood um and i do cardio and i drink a lot of um green tea you know and so just, every once in a while i might like have like um it's this it's this tea that i drink that I get from Walgreens is really basic. It's like it's like a laxative tea. Like if it's really really bad, like my bloating, and it's, then I'll do that with like some honey and a little bit of cider vinegar. Okay. And it helps. The next question is, what are the best ways to keep some curves and lose belly fat? By Tracy and RG or Ari. Ooh, it's a mixture between weightlifting and cardio. We look in the car. Yeah, you have so, to. You, it's it's a balance. Like you have to find the balance for your body. If you're a person who burns fat a lot, then I would focus on lifting a little bit. More, you know, because I'm, I mean, so everybody has different body types. So you have to find what works for you as far as 
weightlifting and cardio because you could be a person who does too much cardio and then you thin out like too much or you could be a person you know like you have to find what works what balance works out for you as far as that but for me i do a certain amount of cardio during the week and i do a certain amount of weightlifting throughout the week sometimes sometimes i might do both like if i'm doing a two a day i'll do cardio and do faster cardio in the morning and i'll come back and i'll do weightlifting in the afternoon so i mean i basically have like i know what works for my body now the next question by sin walker is what are your measurements including height and weight i don't know my measurements i'm gonna take a guess that my waist is probably like a 27 26 right now i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with that because it might be a little bit smaller because i i i used to be at a point where i used to be stuck at 27 with my waist and i wanted to try to get it down to like a 24 25 so i really don't measure myself um i'm gonna say my butt is probably like 35 40 inches like this area um, my boobs are 36 so that's my measurements um, my height I'm 5'6 I don't know my weight because I stopped stepping on the scale the moment that I started working on building muscle so you don't know your weight at all right now no I don't I basically go off of looking in the mirror my looking in the mirror tells me everything that I need to know about what's, go, what's wrong with my body if I'm not focusing on my core enough I'm gonna see it if my legs don't look like sumo big i know that i'm not lifting enough or that i'm not eating enough carbs or that i'm not putting enough protein in my body i go basically off of what i see in the mirror okay this is a good one <clears throat> from miss lucy how do you juggle your supplements your creatine bcaas <laughs> protein glutamine i think love from haiti <laughs> love from Haiti. Oh, she's from Haiti. Okay, that's awesome. Is Haiti the green and the white flag? Green and the, no, that's um, it's Africa. Oh, shout out Africa. Shout out Africa because I have a lot of customers in Africa too. They're awesome over there. Them in um, them in the UK. I love them. Um, but yeah, I don't take creatine. I tried creatine one time and it it just wasn't agreeing with my body. Like I I don't know maybe it was the the company or whatever so after that I ha after that bad experience i kind of left it alone um i do take i do take bcaas um i love it it gives me a lot of energy before i work out i take it every day before every workout and that's like the main thing that i take i don't take a lot of stuff i might i take that and i and i have like a protein i, I have protein like a you know pro protein powder like whey protein powder from a company that I actually I'm sponsored by. So, and I love their products. I just stick with those two things. No fat burners or anything else, like. Uh, what company? Um, BPI Sports. BPI Sports, I've yeah. heard of them, seven good. All right, so from Brittany, Alicia, what are some of your tips for someone starting a weight loss journey? Whew, your mind. You're, you have to be mentally prepared and disciplined. That's a that, that's why you're you you have to be prepared up here because if you're not focused, then you're gonna mess up. So get your mind right and focus on your diet. You know, diet is everything. I focused on eating healthy before I actually started working out because that's more important than everything. If your diet is not together and your mind is not together, then it's not a good combination. You need your mind to be together so that way you can stay consistent and disciplined and push yourself. And your diet has to be together so that way you can accomplish the results that you're looking for. Because there's no point of putting in work if you're not, if you're, the food that you're eating is not going to help towards what your goals are. Got to check the camera. <laughs> this is good. It's going to be under 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, so the last question I'm going to ask you is from I am fed, I don't even know how to say the name. <laughs> how do you bulk without getting the gut? Uh, I think that people tend to like 
considered bulking like they they overeat when they think about bulking they're like oh if i'm gonna bulk i'm just gonna triple the way of the, the amount of amount of carbs and protein that i'm putting in and they just they go too far with it like if you if you're like the most that i would say as far as when i'm bulking like i might eat more protein you know and i might eat a little bit more carbs but i don't go too crazy with it you know i still monitor my portions and i feel like a lot of people like they they they, they start overeating their carbs and overeating certain things in order to, for them to put on muscle but you have to like you have to really watch what you're eating you know like and you and that's where the cardio and the weightlifting come in as well you have to find a balance between that and you have to make sure that you're eating the proper meals on certain days and things like that you have to you have to watch your routine so you said routine so back to the question before um do you think like having a routine is really important for somebody that's starting a weight loss journey definitely definitely you should like it's better if you make living healthy and eating healthy and working out a habit you know so that's where once it becomes a routine it's a, it's a it, if it's a routine it's, it's a habit like you'll get accustomed to doing it like every day like you know that you're eating at this time you know that you're working out at this time it won't be so hard anymore like oh i have to do this it'll just be something that you just automatically start doing it'll become a part of your life so it's good to have a routine i eat on schedule like I have a timer on my phone so that way I know what time I need to be eating around for my meals. I know what time I need to work out, what days I'm going to work out. Like, it's a part of my life now. Would you say that that's even more so important for somebody who's starting off? Yeah, definitely. You have to, you have to make that a part of when you're first starting out. Like, it'll make it easier for you. Like, even when you're when you're meal prepping like that's that's a routine you need to find out two days out the week where you could prep your meals routine what days are when you're coming to the gym what are you going to work on work out on on certain days like you have to make that cycle for yourself all right well do you have anything else that you like to say nope i just i love you guys and i thank you guys for all the support for all the people who've been supporting me, my fifth free game for since 2014, like I just I'm gonna continue to grow and inspire and motivate you guys, and I want you guys to grow with me. Yeah. That's all. And my Instagram name is <laughs> no my my IG is um, at Ashanti T on Instagram. So that's A C H A N T Y T dot T. And also check out Fit Freak Active Wear. What's the website? Uh, www.fitfreakactivewear.com. That's what changed my life. You know what I'm saying? And I'm quite sure you and everybody in here could hear it in my voice. Like the pain. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like crying now. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not. But I do feel like crying. You know what now we're gonna work on glutes and handles. We're gonna uh, define, tone them up. This is one of my favorite things, sweet grape tomatoes. Next. To those in need, we have hats, scarves, gloves, socks, anything else that somebody in need might make you. Speaking. But I'm nervous when I get in front of a crowd. I'm nervous, but if I can take it, I can make it.